Hey guys, it's Rich. Hey guys, it's Rich. But today we're gonna share a real brief. Yeah, what province? Oh man, broke my signage. Three today. Bringing you another. Guys, thanks for watching this too. Oh. It's just one of those Wednesday nights. Pretty shitty, actually. I've only been to um, Five Star once and Grove once. So I'm going to call it a night and live to fight another day. Sometimes you got to do that. In this deal, I rarely drive Monday through Wednesday much anyway. But what am I talking about when I say everyone is doing it? What I'm talking about is using the principle of social proof to your advantage. It's, it's that same deal where when you're walking down the street and you see 10 people looking up at the sky, you are a lot more likely to look up at the sky, see what the hell is going on too. But in rideshare or in you know just the driving game in general, what I mean is telling people everyone's doing it. You pick people up from the airport, you know, hopefully you got a little text set up to reach out and say, hey, you know, this is Rich, welcome to Vegas. I'm gonna meet you here uh, at whatever terminal they're at. Oh, I guess I gotta keep these lights on. And uh, just, uh, you know, add, you know, also, man, I offer real quick courtesy stops. And what I mean by courtesy is out of courtesy. Yeah, they'll get charged a buck or so extra for the wait time in X Classic more in the other but in the other ride types but those people are a lot less price sensitive so I wouldn't worry too much about it um, in route to the property so does that always work no of course it's just sort of a primer to get the conversation going hell I don't even know if the text comes through half the time they may not be on McCarran's Wi-Fi or whatever and they may not get it but the way I lead into it is you know I start with some small talk get the combo going Say, so, yeah, you know, I've been to the dispensaries like 10 times already today. You know, let them know everyone's stopping. Not like they're unique. At the end of the day, though, they're usually just thrilled and will tip you because of your courtesy and professionalism for offering to stop, get them some supplies for their room that they're going to be partaking in anyway, right? And you just helped them do that. It's one less, two less errands they have to run. So, Use language like that. Yeah, you know, I've, yeah, I've been in a dispensary down the street like six times. Everyone I pick up from the airport is like right where they have in my car. Hey, can you take me to get some weed? Talk to it. Speak to it. Let them know it's cool. It's what Vegas is all about. Of course, let them know the rules too. We're elevated up to 35% CISA pause or whatever it's called. Menopause. I, I don't know. Whatever our governor's name is. Um... <laughs> But talk to it and uh, you'll see, you'll make more of these things happen. And I screw up too sometimes. I lost one today. Guy gets in my car, we start talking. He's thinking about moving here. He's staying at Circa. I'm like, dude, you're staying at Circa? That's incredible. That's the first property built from ground up in 45 years down on Fremont. It's just amazing. You gotta go up to the pool level, check out the TVs. And he's like, wow, I'm stoked. Um, anyway, he said no to liquor. Cause usually I start with liquor when I'm going, yeah, if you got, usually I start with water snacks and booze, you know, things for the room that you're gonna need. You come back from drinking, you want some chips, they'll buy the other stuff in there, don't worry about it. Um, but that's what I do, I lead with that. And sometimes I fail to follow up with, or, or we can hit a dispensary too. I mean, I always do, obviously, if we hit the, the liquor store, uh, and almost always, unless I forget or I'm in deep conversation with the guy. So anyway, we get to Circa and he gets out and he goes, dude, is, is that weed? And I go, yeah. And he had told me he hadn't been here for 10 years. I go, bro, cannabis is hundred percent legal. I could take you two miles down the street, get you whatever you want right now. He goes, holy shit. So, you know, I drop the ball on occasion too, but you just gotta get habitual. And also I wasn't joking around on that Facebook live, man telling you three phones in my car in two days that's unheard of for any driver let alone me the guy who, and, and they were all asked hey do you have your phone do you have your, all your belongings when they were getting out but you know people are in conversation they set it on the seat you know they, they just they're thinking about their next wave of fun in vegas and you would think like god you know they had to order the ride with their phone they'd have their phone ready but things happen 
So just check. And again, that, that may generate a tip or at least a really hearty thank Hey, thank you so much for asking me if I forgot anything. One time I left my phone in an Uber and I, the guy never brought it back. He never answered his phone. So they appreciate that. I mean, could you imagine being in a strange city, you know, or a city you don't live in and losing your one major device that you need to communicate to board your flight, then having to run and get another phone and transfer shit and all the stuff that goes with that. You know, it's a headache. So just remind them. And like I said, man, I'm going to start asking three times. Um, fortunately, I mean, they were all, I was able to get two of the phones back. Unfortunately, I took took a low rated rider 4.52 because it was right across the street and it was a Tuesday yesterday and uh, that guy undoubtedly swiped the phone uber by the way man really cool what they did with being able to contact the passenger right through the app now they of course masked the phone numbers it'll show up it's, it's sort of like how Lyft used to do it when you could call them they call you back you click call your phone rings it says potential spam and then it, you press one to connect with that rider. Anyway, this dude, I went above and beyond trying to get the phone back. This guy wouldn't answer his phone, but he didn't have his voicemail set up. So it said, you know, you've reached 212. I jotted down his number. Of course, never accuse. I just said, hey, bro, I had a guy right before you. Um, he thinks he left his phone in my car. And I, I don't know if, you know, when you were getting out, you accidentally may have grabbed it thinking it was yours. He's just really... Um, really needs to get his phone back. He has some important family photos on there is what the guy told me. And um, again, that guy ended up blocking my text. So yeah, he undoubtedly swiped the phone. Strange enough, man, he did leave a $1 tip in the app, but I only think that's because I reminded his wife to take the fucking food. They almost left food in my backseat. Cause remember they get confused. He's getting out one door. I opened the door for her. She thought he was grabbing the food. And I said, oh ma'am, do you want your food? And she's like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought he was grabbing it. So yeah, I'm telling you, this is the other reason why I get out, you know, not only stretch legs, hold the door, which ups your odds for a tip greatly, uh, especially with, you know, people aren't used to having the door held for them. Um, I just, I, everyone gets treated the same in my car. I don't care. Your money's all green to me. So I don't care, you know, and I like treating people like they deserve to be treated. They're coming to our town to spend some money and, um, you know, helping us make money and helping get Vegas back on its feet, which hopefully things look like they're coming uh, coming around. You know, there's, there's a silver lining, but um, we don't know for sure. You know, shit could turn worse. There's 4,820. There's more variants of COVID now than there are pickup zones at MGM. Be funny, make money, guys.